Oh, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. We will be called up to meet him, called up to meet him in the air. This is the promise that the Lord Jesus gives to us in the book of John, chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house and many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, he promised that he will come again to receive us unto himself, that where he is, there we will be also. This is the blessed hope that we have, that one of these days we are going to see Jesus. The Bible said, every man that have this hope in him, purify himself, even as he is pure. Praise the Lord. I'm going to minister to you um, from the book of Luke, the same passage of scripture that was read this morning. We will just uh, look for a little while into Luke chapter 2. Praise the Lord. I'll just take it right from verse 1 and maybe we might try to get up to uh, verse 20 so that we can get a proper understanding of what is going on. Luke chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so he can redeem those who are under the law. And we are glad that you pay the price of our salvation. We are redeemed, not with corruptible things of silver and gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus. And even as we assemble together today, Lord, and we open up the Holy Scriptures, pray, God, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, discernment, and revelation. I pray that the light of God will shine, O oh God, in the hearts of someone today that is in need of salvation. Bring someone to the knowledge of the truth as the Holy Spirit minister your words. Bless us, we pray, in Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Praise the Lord. All right. Welcome again to Straight Gate Ministries. As we get into the Word of God, what we do here in Straight Gate Ministries, we expound the Word of God, we open up the Scripture, and we just go through the Scripture verse by verse. So today, uh, we are just picking up here in chapter 2 of Luke because of the Christmas season. But presently, we are in the book of Genesis. We are studying the book of Genesis verse by verse. Also, we are doing a study in 2 Corinthians. So we pick up just for today, the Christmas season, Luke uh, chapter 2. It tells us, And it came to pass in those days that there were, went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Now, the writer of this book, the book of Luke, is written by Luke. And Luke was a physician. And uh, he was a Bible historian also. And what Luke is doing here, he is giving a chronology of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he's telling us uh, what was going on at the time. And what he's saying here, at that particular time, the person who was ruling, the person who was in charge of the region at that time, it was uh, Augustus Caesar. And uh, those of you who know, um, you know a little bit of history, you'll know that uh, Caesar is a title, and it's a title that is given to uh, the Roman leader. So at this time, uh, Rome, the empire of Rome was ruling over, especially uh, at that part of the world, the Jewish part of the world, over Jerusalem and Judea and all of the, the, the nation of Israel. Um, Rome, imperial Rome, was reigning at that time. So at that time, the Bible tells us that Augustus Caesar, he gave a decree, and this decree was all his region, his whole empire was supposed to be taxed. And uh, I want you to keep in mind, I'm just going to jump ahead a bit here. Um, this is in fulfillment of what the Lord have already prophesied will took, take place in Old Testament times. Now, Caesar, he was emperor of Rome but even though he was emperor of Rome, he was still under the control of God. God was still controlling um, Caesar. Even though Caesar was not a born-again Christian, he was not a, a person of God, God was still in control of Caesar at that particular time. 
So the Bible tells us that he gave a decree. He probably didn't even know that he was uh, under God's control when he gave out this decree. And uh, this decree in, in verse 2 tells us, and, and this uh, is said that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. So here we see that Luke is giving out some more information. So people can know who also was reigning at the time when Jesus was born. He gave us the information. He said that Caesar was in charge of that part of the region. And he also tells us that um, this other person um, uh, is said that uh, Cyrenus. He was governor of Syria, and he said, and all went to be taxed, everyone in their own city. Now, uh, the taxing here, it, it was, um, they, they were supposed to be registered. Uh, it was a census, and uh, this census was conducted, I think, every 14 years, so that uh, Rome can know um, all of the men who were eligible for the army and people who have property and so forth, uh, so that they can have all the information that was needed. And here, we, here what he's saying here, everybody was supposed to go back to their own um, village or their own community. And uh, it seemed as though it was uh, 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 the, the tax that he was levying here on the people. Um, it was like uh, they were doing it tribe by tribe. So all of the different uh, Jewish tribes, they have to go back to their ancestry commun uh, community, wherever their ancestors were from, each person have to go back to that village or that community so that they can be taxed. And here the scripture is telling us, and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth in Judah onto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the, tr the house and lineage of David. Now, as I mentioned before, that this taxing that Caesar was uh, implementing here, he did not know it, but he was being controlled by God, but because this was fulfillment of prophecy, because at this particular time, when he um, enforced this decree, Joseph and Mary, who were the parents, uh, Ma uh, Joseph was just a foster dad of Jesus, and Mary was the biological mother of the Lord Jesus Christ. At this particular time, they were living in Nazareth. But because the scripture have already um, predict that the Messiah, the one who was supposed to be the ruler over Israel, you could find that in Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, you will see that the Messiah, the leader of Israel, he must be born in the city of Bethlehem. He must be born in Bethlehem, which was the birthplace of King David. So here we see um, God was in total control of the whole um, affair. And uh, he uh, uh, caused uh, this uh, Caesar to um, implement this uh, um, census. And because he implemented this census, everybody had to go back to their respective city so that they can enroll in this census. And Joseph and Mary was living in Nazareth at the time. So to fulfill scripture, they have to leave Nazareth and they have to go back to Bethlehem where their um, parents were from so that they can be enrolled in uh, this uh, census. And it is just showing us here that the God that we serve, he is a powerful God. And uh, there's a song that says he has the whole world in his hand. And God have every person in his hands. Hallelujah. Even the unsaved individual, they are in the hands of God. And the Bible tells us in verse 4, And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because uh, he was of the house and the lineage of David. Now, you have to notice here how... Um, Luke, the historian, he is associating uh, Joseph with King David. And uh, Joseph was from the lineage of King David. And uh, for somebody to be from the lineage of David, it means that that person has a right or title 
to the throne of David. And uh, one scripture that comes to mind, it tells us that the Messiah, or the one who is going to rule over Israel, he has to be somebody who is from the lineage of King David. And uh, when you check the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is from the lineage of King David. And when you go through the Old Testament, you'll see that there's approximately 300 Old Testament prophecies that Jesus fulfilled in order so that he can become the Messiah. Jesus Christ did not become Messiah of the world by accident. It is something that was already put into operation before the foundation of the world. So when we call Jesus Lord, and when we say he is the Savior of the world, it is because God already put all of this in operation even before the world was created. So the Bible tells us that they have to go up to Bethlehem, which was their ancestors, um, the place where their ancestors was from, so that they can be enrolled in this center. Now, it tells us in verse 5, to be taxed with Mary, his ex-spouse, wife, being great with child. So here we see um, the Bible is telling us here that Joseph is about to take this journey, but he is taking also Mary, and he called, the, uh, the writer here, Luke, called Mary Joseph's ex-spouse wife. Now we have to keep in mind that Joseph and Mary, they were already husband and wife at this particular time, but there was no sexual contact between Joseph and Mary. That's the reason why the writer is saying ex-spouse wife. It is his wife, but he had no sexual contact with her and, uh, until after the birth of the child. So the Bible is telling us here that Mary, his ex-spouse wife, is about to go on this journey. And I want you to keep in mind that the journey from Nazareth to uh, Bethlehem, it's approximately 70 to 80 miles. And uh, somebody that is with child, and you're not talking about they're traveling by bus or by train. They have to travel by, you know, by donkey, and they have to travel by foot, and they have to go through um, rough places, mountains and valleys and, you know, roads that, you know, uh, with lots of rocks and stone. And here we see that this pregnant uh, woman, she has to make the journey. And uh, it's amazing how the Lord set this thing up. So um, the Lord Jesus Christ, to fulfill scripture, to fulfill prophecy, Jesus must be born in Bethlehem. If Jesus was born in Nazareth, he will not be qualified to become the Messiah. He has to be born in Bethlehem. So the Bible is saying here that Joseph and his exposed wife Mary, uh, he said that she was great being great with child, meaning that uh, the pregnancy was, you know, somewhere, you know, getting close to be uh, due. And in verse 6, and so it was, that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Now, I like that part of the scripture where it said, and so it was. And I think what this is, what Luke is trying to uh, project to us here, that um, even though um, the scripture tells us that she was heavy with child or great with child, they still did not know the exact time when the child would come. We have to keep in mind that in the time of Jesus, when Jesus was born, um, they did not have the technology like we have today when uh, a, a woman kind of have uh, suspect that she's pregnant, she can go into her doctor and the doctor can examine her and the doctor can uh, pinpoint and tell her, well, you become pregnant in this month, in this week, and you can expect the baby such and such a time. They did not have that kind of a technology. So um, what Luke is um, hinting to us here, they did not know the exact time when the child was going to be born. And so it was that while they were there, the days was accomplished that she should be delivered. The time for the baby to be born was accomplished. Praise the Lord. And the Bible tells us in verse 7, And she brought forth her first uh, born son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger 
because there was no room for them in the inn. The Bible said she brought forth her firstborn son. So Jesus was the firstborn son of Mary. And, you know, there are some people today who are saying that um, Jesus was the only son, only child of Mary. And after Jesus was born, Mary did not have any more children. Scripture does not, um, you know, substantiate that. According to what Scripture tells us, the Lord Jesus Christ, he was the firstborn son of Mary, but Mary had other children because the Bible tells us that Jesus had brothers and sisters. But Jesus was the firstborn son of Mary. So she brought forth her firstborn son, and the Bible said they wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Now, this is just showing us here that Jesus, he was a human person. Just like, you know, any other um, baby, when a baby is born, you have to take care of them, you have to wrap them up, you have to keep them warm. When Jesus was born, they had to wrap him up in swaddling clothes. Swaddling clothes is little pieces of cloth that they have to wrap around the baby and to keep the baby warm and to keep the baby's bone straight. And uh, that was required of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So they wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now when the Bible said that they laid him in a manger, a manger, according to the interpretation of the word manger, a manger is a feeding trough. It's a, it, it's a, 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 a trough that they feed animal in. You know, today we see when a child is born, even before the child is born, the parents would make preparation and make sure that the child have a crib, a nice, you know, uh, put together crib so that they can put their baby into. Sometimes they even have a little basket that they have to carry around, carry around the baby. But here we see that the Lord Jesus, who is the creator of the universe, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he was born in a feeding trough. The word manger, a lot of, a lot of people think that the word manger uh, means uh, a stable and uh, you, you know uh, but the word here manger it means feed and trough but they associate um, stable to it because what they're saying it must have animals around so what they're saying that he was born in a, a, a stable but the stable here could be a cave it could be a cave that they have in the side of the mountain that um, these shepherds used to you know, keep their animals in. And uh, as the Bible said, there was no room for Jesus, um, um, Mary, and Joseph to have this baby in those um, in that was around. So they had to go out back to find other accommodation. And, you know, it's important here that, that the Bible said there was no room for them in the inn. So even in the time of Jesus, there was no room for, for, for Mary and Joseph to go into the inn so that they can have, um, this baby deliver. And we are seeing, you know, similar situation that we are seeing in our time. A lot of us, we don't have time for Jesus. We don't have no time in our life for God. We are too busy. You know, there is no room for Jesus. And uh, there's a song that said, have you any room for Jesus? And the question that we would like to ask today, have you any room in your heart for the Lord Jesus Christ? There was no room for him in the inn. And the scripture said in verse 8, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. So here we see that out in the field, at that particular time, while the baby was born, being born, there were shepherds keeping watch over their flock by night. And this is the reason why some people are saying that it was impossible for Jesus to born on December 25th. Because in that particular part of the world, December 25th is more or less cold. And shepherds usually are not outside when it's cold. So what they're saying, it has to be uh, earlier than December 25th. But we are not so concerned about the particular time that Jesus was born. What we are concerned about is that he was born. And it's the same thing uh, like uh, the day on which he was crucified. 
We are not so, the Bible never really gives us the exact day on which Jesus was crucified. But all that we know is that he was crucified. All that we know is that he was born. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So the, the Bible tells us that these shepherds, they were abiding and they were keeping their, their watch over their flock by night. And it tells us, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were so afraid. Now, shepherds are not people who easily become afraid. Because shepherds usually are men who are strong and they are ready to protect intruders so that no one will come in and steal their flock. And these men, even though they were uh, more or less fearless men, because of the scene, because of the appearance of these holy angels, these shepherds, they were afraid. And the Bible said, And the angels said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And the shepherd brought them good news. Jesus, he brings good news, glad tidings. That is what the word means, glad tidings, good news. He brought glad tidings to the world. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible tells us that, and, uh, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings, or glad tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Jesus is for all people. Hallelujah. Jesus is for the rich. Jesus is for the poor. In verse 12, And this shall be, and, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So the angel is given um, these shepherds the instruction where they're going to find this baby that was born. He is wrapped in swaddling clothes and he is in a manger. And it's important for us to understand that in those days, shepherds were not recognized um, in society. They were count as scum in society because of the fact that they deal with these animals and they have no time to go to the temple to um, purify themselves. So they always have to be outside taking care of their animals. And the society at that time count them as nothing. But here we see that the Lord, God, choose these shepherds who are considered to be nothing in society to make um, known the birth of His Son. Hallelujah. To spread the news concerning the birth of his son. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. And uh, it tells us in verse 13, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So here we see that a multitude of angels came uh, to support that one angel who were giving out the glad tidings multitude there recognize uh, or is saying that um, they don't have any um, figure amount that they can say how much it was but it was a multitude of angel or heavenly hosts that came forth to said glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men verse 15 and it came to pass as the angel were gone away from them into heaven the shepherd said one to another, <clears throat> let us now go on to Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. So um, the shepherd, they decide to leave their um, sheep, leave their flock, and go to Bethlehem so that they can see um, what was told to them. They want to make sure that what was told to them was true. And in verse 16, and they came with haste. And a lot of Bible scholars are saying this is where we get the Christmas rush, where people become, you know, excited and become busy when Christmas come around. And they were with, and they, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Jesus was still in his feeding trough, still in his feeding trough, and the shepherd were able to leave where they were with their sheep, 
and go to Bethlehem and they found Jesus and Mary. Jesus was still in his feeding trough. Verse 19, but Mary, sorry, <clears throat> verse 18. And all they that heard it, verse 17 I think, I missed one. Uh, verse 17, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. So here we see that the shepherd, they went and they saw the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. They found him lying in a manger and they spread abroad the, what they saw, the message that they saw concerning the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in 18, as we bring it down to a close, and all they that heard it wonder at those things which were told them by the shepherd. But Mary kept all these things and ponder them in her heart. We are seeing here today, people wonder. The shepherds, they wonder when they saw the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And a lot of people today are wondering whether or not if Jesus Christ is the Savior of the, Savior of the world. And we are saying here today, you don't have to wonder. Scripture already bear out to us that He is the Savior of the world. There is not a name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, but by the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of Almighty God the Father. I hope through this message that I present here today, <clears throat> someone will see the need to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Someone will recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, He is the Savior of the world. He is the one that was sent by God to bring salvation to all mankind. The Bible said if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins <clears throat> and to cleanse us away from all unrighteousness. I'm going to bring this to a close today. I'm going to, <clears throat> I'm going to ask the musicians to come back. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let us all examine ourselves. Let us search our hearts, see our condition before God. The Bible tells us for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. The payment for sin is death, spiritual death, eternal death. Hallelujah. But we are so glad that the Lord Jesus Christ, he made preparation so that we can receive forgiveness for our sins. And the scripture tells us if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us away from all unrighteousness. We bow our heads as we go to God in prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you for the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. We want to thank you that Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The Apostle Paul said, of whom I am chief. And Lord, it doesn't matter how far we've gone in our sinful state, in our sinful lifestyle. You are willing, O oh God, and you are able to deliver. You are our deliverer. And I pray today, even as the birth of your son was proclaimed by the shepherd. And Lord, you are the Savior of the world, the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the light of God will shine within the hearts of every individual that is here today. Lord, I pray someone will come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray that they will ponder in their heart, even as Mary pondered the words from the, the, the angel in her heart. I pray someone today will ponder these words in their heart concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you are more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all the things that we should ask or think by the power of God that worketh in us. I pray even as we prepare to Oh God, bring this session to an end. Lord, that you'll continue to be with us there, Father. You'll work in our lives, oh God. You'll watch over us. The eyes of the Lord run it through and through, throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect. Continue to bless us, we pray. As we enter into our uh, dinner, we ask these favors in the most precious anointed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. At this time, we'll ask Elder Lewis to ask God's blessing over the food that is prepared for us. Praise the Lord.